uh, how you're okay good so it looks like everything's fitting to the screen nicely now uh, let's go ahead and, and start here so we're talking about this the ER or the entity relationship um, design here of a, of a uh, database and last time um, we made a very important um, case that for instance in your database um, you must find a relationship that connects everything together it's absolutely essential you cannot find any way of I mean, you cannot just have like a freestanding table here that doesn't have some kind of connection that brings that together with some other table here. In other words, every table in your database has to be connected to something else. And so in your, in your relationship diagram here, you have to think about what those relationships are. First of all, think about how you want to store that data, like how, which, what tables are going to hold what information here, and how you're going to pack things together. Um, but also, you want to figure out, like for instance, what the relationships are between those things that you're packing together. And that is, I would say, the hardest part of putting together a database. It's the hardest thing because you have to design the uh, kind of the, the structure of the data. Now, it's also hard because when you're designing this thing, if you're designing a, for this database for a company, um, you have to kind of keep your eye on, on, for instance, what would make it efficient to use for that company? What would make it easy for that company to use? In terms of when new people come in, for instance, they uh, may not necessarily know the database, but you want them to be able to figure out how to use it. And so you want to design something that's logical. And so that's what I'm really talking about, the conceptual design here. Like, how do you make something that's easy to follow, easy to maintain, but just simple to use? Because ultimately, it has to be maintained by some person, typically, not usually a machine, but a machine may query it, but a person is going to be maintaining this thing after a while. Um, so you want to make sure that all the links and all the designs you put together to link this in, or to, you know, the, to make the relationships between these entities, you want to make sure that all that is fairly logical. Anyway, so that was the big point from last time. Um, the new things we're talking about now is we're going to start talking about keys here. And there's a lot of things, there's a lot of foundation to keys. Um, but basically, though, when you are designing a table so that it is connected to another table or to another part of the database, um, you're going to use a piece of information which we're going to call a key. And that key is going to be kind of the linker, the thing that connects. And now today we're going to be talking about how to connect things together. We're going to use basically an inefficient system here, but it's still going to be using what we call keys uh, to connect a table to, to another table. But you have different kinds of keys to, to contest with here. Uh, you have, for instance, your primary keys, which are unique, I'll just read this, unique identifiers for the rows of information that are in a relation. That means that as you have a, a, a table here, Every row you can guarantee is going to be unique, even though the information in, in all the, the columns may be the same and all the attributes may have the same information. There is one uh, attribute which is called the primary key, which has uh, a number or some some kind of a, a serial number or something that you that you put together a code, which is something that makes sense to you. But it's a but basically it's different for every single reference in there. Every single observation has a completely different um, you know row here. And that's because your key is saying, I am a different piece of information than the one before me. The, un the one before me um, has the same information, but I am an observation which is you know, this observation, and that is that ob observation here. Um, then you have um, other kinds of keys you can create called super keys, and those are, for instance, you can use not just one identifier from a table to connect that to another table, but you can use several different uh, I attributes here to connect that to another table. So you can say that, for instance, if you're creating a, a website or a, a website or a, I keep saying a website, but a database, um, you can say that you're 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 linking up one table um, with another uh, in terms of two qualities of information in in one of the tables. And so that would be like a super key here. It's not just using one column, but you're actually using uh, a combination of things. Whereas the primary key is just one column of information here. Now the um, Candidate keys here is a minimal set of attributes necessary to identify an end tuple here. So what that means is you can, when you're working with like super keys here, you have to figure out, well, how many of these attributes do I need to kind of specify this piece of information over that piece of information? Like how much do I need to make things um, unique, to make this information kind of uniquely identified? And so your candidate keys are going to be the, the, the set Every, and, you have to, and you have to work this thing out. It's not like a hard and fast rule, but you have to figure out what that, that set of keys is that will somehow make this key table different from something else. And so, for instance, you may have a table that contains uh, lists of names, maybe lists of people's, uh, I don't know, 
the, the first two digits of their phone number, and uh, maybe their, I don't know, the, uh, the, the kind of laptop that they own. And so you might say that, for instance, there's a bunch of people who have the same laptop. So obviously, I couldn't use laptop as, a, as an identifier here. But maybe having the first two digits of their phone number and their laptop somehow put those two pieces of code together, then I can create some kind of identifier which could say that these are all uh, the same. Is that me chiming, or is that somebody else? It, it could, no, sorry. It could be me, because um, my Slack is, is red hot right now for some reason. I have to just turn it off. <laughs> Very exciting days, aren't these? Um, OK, so then um, super keys are a set of the table whose values can be used uniquely to identify a tuple. It's kind of the same idea. I'm not going to get too involved in, in, in these things right now. We'll hit all these things in due course. But for now, though, we're just going to be talking about the, the primary keys. And I think that once you see how primary keys work, then the other keys will explain themselves here. OK, so anyway, the importance of keys. Yeah, so there we are. I just made that. <laughs> I just said that. It's right here. OK, what I want to do now is let's go back and, and create a, um, we'll, we'll create a table here. We're going to put some information here. And we're going to play with this, 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 this table a little bit here. So I'm going to copy this code. Hopefully I can just copy this here. And me being me, I'm going to go to put this in my editor um, just to hang on to it in case so that I can get it back if something happens here. Oh, this is so messy. Goodness gracious. Um, I wanted to show you, as you're copying and pasting your, your code here, um, please make sure that you, you kind of remove all the other, I guess, text that doesn't need to, that's not computer code, like I just did. Um, in this particular, uh, in this piece of information right here, for instance, what you see right here is there's a um, drop, sorry, let's remove this piece here. There we go. Uh, let me just go back to my slides for a second here. Okay, I have this piece of code here called drop table writers. And now what this is gonna do is that, you'll see that if you open up a, if you open up your database, as we'll do right now, in fact, where's my database here? It's right here. When you open up, a, when, you, when, you, when you create a database here, Actually, where am I? I don't want to be here. I'm going to go to my working directory here. Desktop. Um, I'm going to go to um, working. When I go here, this is my working place here. Um, when I go ahead and write SQL Lite 3 here, then, for instance, if I dump this information here, drop table writers, it will say error, no such table, no such state table writers here. Now, you'll notice that from now on, when I start putting my, my table data together here, and hopefully you, you all can see me here, but when I start putting my, my create table code in here, I can, there I can see it here, I can have schema here. Each time I, if I modify this code, if I modify this code in any way, um, then it's not, it's in, in some versions of SQL, and I think that seemingly all of them, except for maybe one or two that I can think of here, but if I modify this table in any way here, like if I change that, if I want, if for instance, ID is an integer here, but now I want it to be a, a bar char or something, um, if I change that, then for instance, it doesn't necessarily reflect, the change doesn't get necessarily get, get reflected in my database. In other words, you have to rebuild the table to show any new changes here. But because the, um, it's more efficient for SQLite here just to say, well, wait, that table exists already, I'm not going to go through and, uh, and, and, and rebuild this table because it's already there. You have to get rid of the table. And then once you get rid of the table, then the table doesn't exist, and then you can rebuild um, the, the whole table here. So what I'm going to do now is, in my code, you'll notice that I always have this drop table writers. There's other ways of doing this, but this is just my lazy way of putting it together. Um, I could have a table. I could, I mean, I guess I just, you know, quit the database each time. But I just write this code here that just says drop table writers. That means since the table writer has existed, it removed that table from memory here, so it's gone. And then it used my new create code to create my new table. Now, if I hadn't done that, let's just go ahead and, and put up, uh, I should just copy this out again. Let's see if I can, if I can change something here. Um, what can I change? I'll tell you what, I'm gonna add another, I'm gonna add another, another element here. Let's see what that works here. I'm new. Bar char. That's my, my that's my identifier here that holds my attributes, and I'll just go ahead and dump that in there. And you see that it says here, I'm sorry, I cannot create that that change because the table already exists. 
So it's basically saying it's I'm not gonna I'm not gonna change the table. Go. You have to remove the table and then re then make your changes and then reinstate it again. And so that's really what this is all about here. You have to that's why I have this this drop table here. But the thing is though that when you type in drop table by itself. You see, it's, if I, I put it in the first time, it gets rid of the table. The second time, uh, there's no, no table in there, so it has to, you know, it, it, has to, it, it says I'm, there's an error message here. And you can see that it's gone. Then I can put that other thing in here where we say I am new. And if I type in schema, there we go. The table, the, addi the, uh, the addition here changed. My, table, my new table is stuck. Anyway, that's just a, the quirky nature of SQL. And every time you come across these things, I will tell you about them. So don't worry about about uh, there's there's no li there's no minds to step on over here. But every time there's something that, that might be difficult, I will spend some time talking about this. You're probably thinking, why does it even matter? Um, well, I, I don't want you to do what I did, which I wasted my first when I was first working with databases. I may have wasted an, a whole afternoon trying to redesign some of my tables here, not realizing that I couldn't design them until they ever actually dropped. And so I don't want you to waste your time like that because. I think that one person wasting time is, is, is bad enough. Okay, so now what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, see where about does my where my slides go? Just close them. There we go. Um, we're going to be adding this information here, this this primary key information right here, and we're going to see what we can do with that. And so I think I've just and that's why I, <laughs> I know I'm speaking all over the place here, but getting back to my editor here, this is why. I keep my information um, in this editor here so that I can, I can get back to this code here. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go and populate this database. And in doing that, what I need to do is I need to find, here we go. I'm going to copy this information here from, I think we already have this information, but I'll just go ahead and do this anyway, just because it's going to be messy, but whatever. Um, I don't know why this has to be so tricky all the time here. If I skip the I and the and at the end, it should work. <sighs> okay, so I, I forgot those two things, and there we go. All right, so this is my insertion command here. I'll just put this uh, into a normal state here so that you can, or something that's more easy to read here, but maybe that'll be okay. Okay, so we have that information here. Now, um, let me put the other information here in my in my in my uh, text file here, and I'm doing this so that you can follow with me. Otherwise, I, I, mean, I could have done this before we started class. But I want you though to be in the habit of each time you you're making a database, like making tables, like for instance, um, sorry, when, each time you're making the tables, like up here, I want you to be copying this information um, into your uh, into an editor here because I want you to be able to rebuild this database. I expect you to put these databases through torture and to play with them and see what happens when you when you break them, and then. It's no big deal because if they get broken, you can always just go back to the same code, copy and paste everything back in there, and then you're set. You're all done. Um, right, so I'm going to go back to my slides here and get some more information. Uh, where are we now? So we're here. And we have this books over here. And I do have this from last time, I think. Well, maybe it's just, it's just easier going through this. Otherwise, I'd have to go and search that file. Okay, so I have this code over here. Again, it's this drop table books, blah, blah, blah. And then I have this new information here. Give it a name here, db2, txt, templates. Let's give it a name. I have to give it something. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy out these, uh, these population uh, terms right here. Go back to my thing over here, and I'm going to paste all this in there. Um, I guess I can put this back. Okay, so I think my data actually begins here. Good. Righty, so actually, let me make this a bit smaller here. I know that looks like it's getting too small, but I wanted to put on the one page here, but maybe this is okay. Okay, so um, I'll just go ahead and hmm. has anybody read any of these books? By the way, I hope you have. These are the absolute essence of life. You don't need any other books if you read these books. I think. <laughs> well, maybe you do, but 
Where's the last one here? Okay. Okay, next one here. Hopefully you're following everything I'm doing here. And you when you're when it's later on you'll understand why we spend all this time here, because when the databases get much more complicated, it's much easier just to go ahead and dump all this stuff in as a copy paste field. We could make our persistent data file here, or it's persistent uh, um, you know, uh, database. But then we still need to have this code here so that we can bring it back if something terrible happens to it. Okay, going back to my terminal, I'm going to go ahead and just dump everything in here. I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that everything works out okay. And looking back over my thing, I don't see any, I don't see any problems here. So basically, I've just copied and pasted a database. I've just recreated the thing here. So if I'm working on this database and I happen to break it, it's no big deal because I just go back to the code that I have already here and I can, I can just copy and paste all this information and then get, it, get my database back together again. It basically means to rebuild the database, which is exactly what we want. If I type in schema, you can see that, for instance, I have writers and I have uh, books, which is there. And I, in fact, you can even see that by typing table or tables. It's all the same. And so you're good to go. Now, going back to my slides here, what do they ask us to do here? So our slides are going to be asking us, do we, have, we put our, oops, do we put everything, do we put all the data in there? Oh gosh, did we miss out on these guys? Uh, I think we missed out on some. Yep, okay, so we, there's still more information I have to do here. Sorry, everybody. I'm gonna just copy that in there and do this. Um, sorry, let's see, go back to my editor, and then I'm gonna just paste all this information in here. This is my, my I have four different writers, basically what I'm talking about here is four different writers. And we need to make sure that we have four different primary keys that we're gonna be testing. And it'd be so much easier if this was like, not looking so crazy here. Ah, okay. I'm gonna get all this, these comments here. Okay, now I've just done this. So what I can do is I'm gonna save this, copy this, pay, or, and then paste it into my terminal. And when I go over here, because I have drop commands inside my things here, my code should just stick. There we go. In fact, there we are, books. In fact, I can type in a query to find out what actually is inside my books here. So remember, you type select all from books, and then you can see basically everything there. What I just put in just now was all this stuff here that has this number three and four. Now, let me just go ahead and show you something here before we go too far. Um, that is that if I show you what's in my writers table here, you'll notice that I have uh, Francis or F. Scott Fitzgerald as the as number one here, Arthur Conan Doyle as number two, Ernest Hemingway as number three, and John Edward Williams as number four. These numbers here serve to make sure that my table is always unique. So if I have like another Conan Doyle in here, another reference to him, um, I would then have to change the number. I couldn't put another number there. What do I mean by that? Well, let me just show you something here. So I'll just choose um, that number here. That, that, that number actually comes from, for instance, I type in schema. That number from our writer's table here, which as you can see is right, or actually, sorry, from our books table, and, our, and it's also in our writer's, our writer's table here. But the first one here, or sorry, let's talk about, let's talk about the writer's table first of all. Um, geez, hang on, let me just bring that back again here. There we go. These numbers here. So the schema, if I type in schema writers, <laughs> then you'll see that we're actually using this thing here called the primary key. Now, what that means is that this number that we see right here on the, uh, on this, on the, uh, the left-hand side is actually our primary key. It's a very robust and kind of very simplistic way of, of kind of, of, of defining how we're going to connect these tables. Because remember, we now have two tables here, books and writers. We have a table that contains information about the writers, and we have information, or another table called books that contains information about what the writers wrote. But we have to find some way to connect the books table with the writers table so that when I do a query and saying, tell me what books Arthur Conan Doyle wrote, or tell me what books um, Hemingway wrote, these come from two separate tables here. And so I need to connect those tables together. And so that's really why we have these primary keys here. 
And so it's a very simple system here, but I'm, so I'm actually going to be connecting everything here just by numbers. So I have this writers, oops, sorry. Uh, I have these numbers right here, and if I type in books, for instance, I have these numbers right here. And so I've outlined this whole thing here is that this number here, one, one, one here, I can be, I can have multiple or same values in this corner here if I want on that, so in that area. And that, and that value actually that I'm looking at here is, let's go back over here so we can see what that, what it is in our writer's table, or actually our books table, it's this ID integer not null. That's what's holding that value, which is right, or sorry, on the left hand side here, that, that piece right here, it's an integer value. Now that value number one, 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 great, the great Gatsby, one, this side of paradise, one, tenders the night, that one actually correlates to the number one in the table of writers. So that is our connection. It's a very robust logical connection here. It's not very, it's not very exciting to look at here, but that is one way that we're going to be using to kind of bring everything together because otherwise we, we need something here that we can use to kind of like, you know, kind of connect um, all the pieces here together so that we can get some, you know, we can, we can figure out what we're, what we're, um, uh, you know, how we can connect our, our tables together. It's a relationship, in other words. Okay, so let's get back to our slides here and see where we're going from here. But we're going to be using that one here to be uh, drawing up our queries here. So we've just done, we've just run these things right here. So we're selecting all from books where you can see, for instance, what the um, what the the books look like here, what or what the uh, sorry, there's, you, can, you can basically click on the uh, you, you can see what's in the in each of the books in each of the tables here, books and writers. And now what we're going to do is we can actually write a conditional, um, which is basically this is what they call a conditional query here, where we're writing a query that tells us where um, we are looking at uh, a specific entity of information, and we're using that as our filtration system here. Let me show you what I mean by this. And so, in our, and so if I'm looking at my table right here, I can type this in here. We have this country of origin here, is equal to USA. Do we have, oh, you know what? I need to put my own quotes in here. There we go. The, uh, when you copy and paste quotes from the slides into this, it doesn't seem to work very well. But basically, though, what I'm looking at is I have this, this group right here called the entity here. This, or this, this, this is my, my attribute here. And so I'm looking at the entity USA in this attribute. So going back to, for instance, our editor here, let me just see what we're looking at. Um, this country of origin here for writers, um, right here. What I'm doing is I'm writing a query where I'm actually looking at the value of this country of origin um, attribute in my table. That's how this whole thing works here. And so that's what they call a conditional. And I think we've seen this before. But basically, though, this conditional query is saying, okay, I want you to go through the entire table here. In other words, select all from, go through the, it's basically go through the entire table here. And every time this says USA, not here, but here and here, every time it says USA, I want to see that row. And so that's where this, this command here comes from. Show me the whole row. Whoops. Show me the whole row from this writer's table where, for instance, this piece over here is equal to USA. And that's kind of like how everything's kind of, you know, kind of that's how you, you would organize your conditional query table here. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the thing here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the, uh, we, we, we go back to my slides here, but we still, you know, to be, we're going to be connecting our, our tables together here. So how do I do that? I'm going to go ahead and move that over here, grab that. Okay. So now, how do we actually connect these tables here together here? I, want to have, I need to have some kind of conditional sense here that's going to be bringing my two tables together. Well, as I alluded to earlier, as you can see, and maybe you can't see where, you can't really see where I'm pointing to, but in these two different tables here, in the middle of the slide here, there's an arrow which points to the ID integer not null primary key of the writer's table. And then there's also an other, the other end of the arrow pointing to the ID integer not null, which is in the books table. That is our link. It's a logical link. It's just, I, and in fact, I had to say, I'm creating this link here. I'm going to say that these things are all connected by a number. And so that means that if those numbers were to get lost, then that means that the link is also lost, which is actually kind of, kind of sad. And so you have to find some way of, you, know, to, you, have, you have to find some system to make this a logical link. But for me, though, just use a regular number, and I think that you'll find that many databases do that. But you may find, for instance, that it doesn't always work that way, where you might have a table, for instance, in some bank or whatever it is, 
and the link is that um, if, a, if someone has more than X amount of money in the bank, then this is the kind of table we're going to be using, but otherwise if they have less than that money, then we'll be using this other kind of table over here. And so you have to, but you're, you're creating some logical link to connect two things together. It's still a relationship, and that's fine. And so this is the relationship that we have here. Now, the relationship, to actually act on that relationship, how do we actually make sure that we can connect two pieces of information or, or two pieces of information from two different tables? Well, I have what's called the general form, which is basically the same thing as you see below, and that is that we're, this is all how I type everything in on one line. But I want you to start thinking about writing your queries like this. This really helps you to kind of, if you write your queries like this, this will really help you to kind of figure out an easy way of putting them all together. Having, you know, having writing your, your queries where you have all these different attributes coming together and everything has to balance out and then you have to create your relationship and blah, blah, blah. What we have here is you are selecting last name and title. This dot, this word dot in front of us here, this word here, writers dot, this signifies that the last name is a piece of information which is coming from the writer's table. And over here, this books dot is signifying that the word or the attribute title is going to be coming from the books table. Now, they don't come from the same table. You can verify this for yourself if you don't believe me. Uh, you can go back to, your, go back to your, your database here, and you can type in uh, dot schema. And you'll see that, for instance, the uh, what was the thing we're looking at here? Uh, books title. And you'll see that the title, uh, here I am in books, uh, title is right here. Oops. Title is right there. But we don't have a title in writers. There's no attribute called writers. And that's because writers is a table that just concerns the people, whereas writers or the uh, books concerns the books. And so getting back to our code, we have this books.title is saying that title comes from books and writers comes from, or last name comes from writers. But then you have this information over here where you have to say, well, what are these tables that you're using here? Writers and books, what is that? Are they tables? Is that something else? You have to have this from writers, comma, books, or it could be from books, comma, writers. It doesn't, the order doesn't matter here, as long as you have them both in there. And this is saying that from these tables here, and you have to separate these tables by a comma here. And then down here you have this where condition exists. Now this is where we actually use our primary key that we've, just, that we've uh, established here, and that is that we're saying that where the writers, or where the ID from the writers table is equal to the ID from the books table. Does everyone see how that works? In other words, it's the same number, right? So going back to, uh, let's just go back to our table for a second here and see this. You see, for instance, we have each of these writers here has a number attached to them, and each book also has a number attached to them. And so we're going to just say, where the number is the same, that must be the relationship that we're going to be using here. So um, please go ahead and try this. Uh, this is actually the fun part. We get to <laughs> try all these, these things out. I'll go back to my, my uh, over here. Oh, you know what? I need to, what is it then? Uh, oh, there's just a space missing. So you can see that when you type in this, this particular command here, let me pull up what's on the screen here, okay. I get an idea about But when you when you put a, when you put this whole thing together here, you're saying, okay, select for me information from the writer's table, which is called last name, and uh, information about title from the books table, from these tables here, writers and books, and then where my condition is true, and the condition is that I want the writer's ID information equal to the ID information in the books, and that's something that we put together. Now that is the tricky part here. So when you're designing big databases here. You have to think of this kind of system here, how you're going to connect this table with that table. And then you need more information, or you add more information to your database, where you add another table, and you have to find another way of connecting all these pieces together. And so that is where the talent comes from here. The code that we write, I think you'll find after a while, um, it's tricky and challenging at first, but I think that you'll agree that it's actually not that hard after a while. I mean, we all code in here, and so it's, there's, it, it becomes kind of second nature. We start thinking in code. The hard part actually becomes, uh, designing this, the hard part is actually designing this relationship here. But we will succeed. Of course we will. Of course we will. Okay, so now the next thing is we have this, uh, so this slide over here, you can, um, this is your question that you're asking here. 
And this is how you answer that question here. In fact, in your lab today, I just have to say we do have lab, um, the deliverable that you're going to have is I'm, going to, I'm asking questions like this, and your deliverable is to write queries which are able to tell me the answer. I'm actually not interested in the number. I'm interested in your, in your actual query. But anyway, we'll talk about that. So we have this. I think this is the same, I think this is the same piece of information here. I just put it all on one page here. But say, for instance, I want to change some things around here. I'm going to change my quote or my, 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 um, uh, my query just a little bit here. Notice up here, though, for instance, I'm interested in the last name. And I'm interested in the book title here. But here, for instance, I'm interested in the last name, but I'm also interested in some other stuff, too, book title, and I want the book's year. And so you can just kind of like throw in a new piece of information here. Um, and I need to make a space here. I don't know why that space doesn't show up here. By the way, if there are errors, it's probably because of spacings. Um, but every time you add another variable here, you have to put in, you have to tell it where the table is coming from here. So I'm going to say, okay, well, let's let's go back and find something that I can add here. Um, so let's go and let me go back to my editor and see what my what's available to me here. I'm going to find something from books. Books, I would like to know about the year. Or no, actually, the category. How about that category? I don't know what the category is. So how would I, how would I add that to my, my query? Well, very simply. Um, oops, wrong one. Let's go over here. So if I wanted to have the year here, for instance, I'd have to say, okay, well, it's, I, I need to go to the books table. And what do I find in books? I find year. There we go. And so you can see that you can add some more information. And you can do this. You can, you can add as many things as you possibly want. Let's find something else here from uh, writers. Um, how about their birthday? What do I, and what do I find out? See, this is the, 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 hard, chart, uh, the hard part about using, um, about using uh, just one, one window here for me. So you have to keep switching back and forth uh, to see, for instance, what the names of these attributes are. You see I'm looking right now, the attributes. And you, have, and you actually have to spell the attributes uh, exactly as they are. So I'm going to go back. So I'm going to say birthday, and I'll go back to my, my database here, and I'm going to say writers dot birthday. Let me just show you something here. Um, birth, oops, it's not, it's birth date. Sorry. It works there. Now, let me just show you something here. You're probably thinking, is it really necessary to type all this code in here? This is just nuts. Well, if you remove writers, um, sometimes it doesn't, <laughs> yes, it works here. But in some databases, it's not going to work, though, because, for instance, if you have more than one attribute with this name, it's not going to know which one you mean. And so you'll get this error. And so sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work. And it depends on the complexity of your database. And so whenever I write these things here, I am always um, writing things with as much uh, text as I possibly can here so that the database can grow. It can get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that means that I can add more tables. I can even add the same attributes in each table. I have the, like, the same variables, if you will, in each table here. And then I can, you know, my, my database can, uh, can, can get, you know, can scale up a little bit here. But if you, if you don't add some of this information here, then it, it's, um, it's hard to, to take that same code and scale it up. In fact, you have to sometimes go back and rewrite some things. So I do this thing like this. <laughs> um, I think that's probably good for now. Let's um, go back to the slides here and then see what else there is going on there. And they're right here. These are some other types of, um, oh, here's a conditional that we can actually add here. This is actually interesting here. So select the writer's last name, book's title from writer's books, where we have now two conditionals here, where, for instance, this you have to have to connect both of your tables together. You must have that to connect the relationships, between the, or to make the, rela the relationship between both tables. Now I'm going to add this other piece of information here, saying where the writer's name is Ernest. So let's see how that works here. So if I go here and I type in, uh, for instance, back here, I'm going to leave the same, the same query that I've had before, and it still works, you know. Um, I need to add another piece of information here, another condition, and that is and, so my next condition, the first condition was this writer's ID is equal to book's ID. You must have that there, that's your, that's your relationship. But my next thing here is and writers dot first name is equal to Ernest, E-R-N-E-S-T. There. So what just happened there? Before we got everything, because remember, 
the only true thing that we had to have was that the table numbers had to, you know, the, the table numbers, the, the, the primary key and the ID had to line up. But now we have, of course, the lining up has to happen, but we also have information about the name, where right? the name has to be Henry Ray. Um, how about Arthur? Oops. Do I get in my, oh no, if I get, do I get some, uh, sorry? Oh. Oops. Oh, gosh. Ha! <laughs> Thank you, sir. So there. So what I'm trying to say, though, is that by using, by using these kinds of queries here, you are now able to, I mean, let's see what we've come to so far here. We are now able to connect two tables together here, which is a, which is a central piece of, of databases here. But also, though, we're not asking for everything from the database. Otherwise, you can just look at a spreadsheet and get that information. Instead, we're filtering our information down into a specific piece of information that we want. In other words, we're looking at Arthur, or we're looking at Ernest, or we're looking at, uh, I'm trying to think who else is in there. Um, we're looking at, uh, for instance, uh, Edward Williams, for instance. Williams is in there, I think. So this is what Williams is doing. Um, I A M S. Am I getting it wrong here? Oh, gosh. Who's in there? John Edwards? It's Well, anyway, I'm looking over my I'm looking over my slides right now to see who else I can add there. But the thing is, that we're looking for specific types of information here about our writers here. We don't just want every old thing here, but we want specific pieces of information here, which is which is uh, concerning uh, you know, a, a particular writer here. Oh, last name. Let's see what's going on here. Um, it's not that. It's it's John. That's why I'm, that's why it's not working here. Because John isn't his last name. John is his first name. There we go. You um, all. I mean, what I would say though is that as you are writing your code, one of the things that I, I think you picked up on by now is that as you're writing your code, though, if you have your uh, writing your queries, I'm talking about. If you have your code that builds your database, like Candy, like right here, then it's much easier to be able to write your your your, your queries. Because remember, though, to write your queries, you need to have access to these attributes here: category, price, title. You need to know what these things are because that's how you're going to. That's the data that you're you're trying to access in your in your um, in your query here. And so I would recommend, like, whenever you're making a database here, to have a text file open that shows your um, that shows your your table construction, so that as you're writing your code here, you don't misspell the query uh, or in the query your um, attribute names, because then you have to go back and figure out how that you know what the name was or what the name is supposed to be or what the what exactly the query uh, attribute was, and blah, blah, blah. If you just have it open, then it's much easier. And so as you're writing your, your queries, like down here, for instance, um, it, it makes it much, much easier. As you're putting this together, you can say, ah, oh, it's called year, it's, or it's called title, not book title, but or it's called last name, where N is capitalized, everything else is lowercase, and it comes from the writer's table. If you have everything open, then it's easier to write your queries. And I would say that probably nine times out of 10, when, when, when I'm writing queries, the bugs that I happen, or that I happen to have here, are because I've misspelled my attribute names, as you just saw. Apologies. <laughs> okay, cool, right? Rock and roll, sort of. Really, rock and roll? Is it... It's hard to make out whether people are like gritting their smiling or gritting their teeth in class here because you can't see people's faces with our our masks. Okay, so. Um, I think that basically is here. You can now, I mean, I think that this puts a very powerful um, skill in your hands, and that is that you can ask questions of your database, which are a little bit more extensive than what we were doing earlier, where we were just saying, give me the names of everyone in this, in this table here. But now we're saying, give me the names of this table in, the, in light of this other table, in light of this specific query here, or a specific condition. Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, here we are. I think we've done, here's some other examples of things you can look at here. I would say that uh, don't bother memorizing um, the actual code here on, on, on writing these queries here because each database will have unique types of code. But instead, uh, start looking at like the, the, the construction of your code here. This is something else I'd like to try here. This says here, show me the above information here, but only for books that cost less than $12. So how does that work then? Well, again, you're going to have a condition in there. And that is that, um, hope this will work here. There we go. Your condition is that, first of all, the books 
and the writer's tables have to be connected by their IDs, which we always have to have some kind of relationship. But then I'm going to add this other condition here where price, and price, for instance, I think this is getting smarter. So for it's, the SQL, since books is the only attribute here, it's figuring out, or sorry, price is the only attribute here, it's figuring out that the price, books.price, is uh, less than 12. And so it's basically saying, this is my other conditions I care about here. And remember that uh, your books, let me just show you here. You can see that this number at the end of the, on the right over here, uh, this is going to be your price. How do I know? Sorry? Oh, oops. Thank you, sir. Sorry. I, I get carried away and I do a different catch. What I'm trying to say is this number right here uh, is the price. And so, for instance, you, uh, if you look at the book schema here, you'll see that the last piece that we have in our table is this price information here. And so, looking over here, this number is your price. And so, going back to our original query here, where price is less than 12, that's going to be looking at that particular piece of information in your books table and saying, you are a number, okay, are you a number greater than 12? Uh, nope, okay, I don't care. Uh, it, it kind of moves on, are you a number less, less than 12? Uh, yes, you're less than 12, okay, right, I'll, I'll put your, I'll, I'll remember your row and then I'll print that to the screen. And so now you have a very powerful skill in your hands where you can you can, you can write these, these, these things here. But remember, though, that as you write your queries, this relationship information must be present. Otherwise, it's going to be hardly, um, it's, going to, it's going to work badly here. It's not going to, you won't be able to connect your tables together. In fact, let me just show you what would happen. Let's just experiment here. Um, let's just say I remove, I remove this relationship information here. And you'll see that a bunch of information has just come out of my database. Now, let me just say something here. Um, just because you're getting results on your screen does not mean that your results are actually worth anything. It doesn't mean that they're true. Instead, what's happening now is that um, it's going through, this is a, kind of a nested loop now. Both tables are being kind of searched, but there's no relationship between the tables. It's just kind of printing up things in each of the tables here. And so what it's doing is it's saying, print up everything in the writer's table and the book's table and check up on the books that are less than 12. And so you'll see that you get this information here, but you're getting a bunch of repetition here. And so this is, in some cases here, it's technically correct. It's not, it's not like you're not actually linking your, your, your tables together um, here. You're not, actually, you're not actually connecting your tables together. But if you, if you actually have this, this piece of information here, or this piece of code here, where you're connecting your tables together, then that suggests that you're um, actually kind of querying both tables at the same time here. And so that is another big mistake that I, I tend to make if I'm using an SQL database. I might find, for instance, I run a query and I don't, there's no, notice that there's no linker here between both of my tables. And so I just run enter, I just run this, or I run this command here and I'm getting something and I think, oh great, okay, so that it works. There was no error. But actually this is a logical error where you get, where the code worked, but it didn't do what you're expecting it to do. And so what I'm recommending here is that when you write your queries, uh, please do make sure that you have the linkers involved and then you have your conditions. And so I always put my, as a convention here, I always have my linkers in front and then I have my conditionals after that. Okay. Um, getting back to the things here, basically I have some, some examples that you can play with yourself if you'd like here where you can connect together um, the tables from your Martee and our linker. We can spend some time on Friday if you'd like to, to actually run the same thing that we did today, but using the, these other different tables here. Um, I believe that if you go to your sandbox, let me go back and check here. I'm just gonna, I'll get out of this. Uh, type in .exit here. Um, I think that uh, you'll have these files there to help you build your database. Uh, let me just check here. Hang on, just wait a second here. Which lessons? So I have the two. I go to the sandbox. So in your sandbox, you have this this thing here called writers and books. If you can all see this here. This is code that um, you would have copied and pasted in from your slides, uh, such that you could actually rebuild the T and department and session tables here. You have all the code here. So what I want you to try and do. And I have I've given you one one of these uh, your, your 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 basic query here where you're actually connecting your two tables here. 
But I want you to try and connect these tables together. Connect, I'll try and connect all three. It's basically the same thing here. Every time you have a condition, you have an and. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave it there. We'll come back to this on Friday. And, but spend some time looking over this just for fun. All right? There's something to hand it. All right, are there any questions? All good to go, everybody? Stay well. Enjoy the weather. Get some, get some air. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Take care.